Hey guys, Jordan from Precondo here with Tridel beginning to ramp up marketing for the Well Condo development at Front and Spadina. I figured it was pertinent and about time to create a video sort of walking everyone through exactly where the site is and what's coming um, in addition to going over the sales process as well as prices, etc. Um, and sort of jump in front of all of the questions that I know are coming. This is one of the most anticipated developments in a long, long time and we're seeing a ton of interest. So, uh, you know, without further ado, let's jump right in. So this is the site plan, this is the location and, and sort of the massing of the three buildings. Um, so uh, if you're looking at this as sort of a north to south orientation with Wellington being at the top here, front being at the bottom, and Spadina along the far left nearest the tall office tower. Uh, with the exception of that office tower, everything else is residential, some rental, and some for sale. So in terms of what phase one is and what's gonna be selling as of the June 15th platinum you know, pre-public launch, uh, the two towers are highlighted here in yellow and pink. So the first one is the classic series. This one here is highlighted in pink and it's fronting on, you guessed it, Front Street. Um, and this one is 38 stories with 400 units in total. Uh, and your average per square foot uh, that the Tridel is charging is about 1300 per square foot. To put that in perspective for anyone who doesn't know what I'm saying when I say that, um, it's just a, a simple multiplier on, on cost to get an idea of where condos are going to be priced. So while Tridel has not released official pricing, they have told us and many of the other platinum brokers sort of the average price per square foot. And we can deduce from that based on suite size, you know, where the prices are going to be starting at. So it's not 100% accurate and it can change, but it's as close as we get. And typically we're within two or three percent of the actual prices. So. Um, in terms of per square foot, for example, if something's 1300 per square foot, then on a 1000 square foot unit, you're paying 1.3 million. Okay, so with the building specifics, this tower is going to have an occupancy of September 2022. Um, that's the marketed date, as we always say in pre-construction, budget for two to six months of delays, depending on development. Now, with the case of the well, they're already well underway with construction. The underground is coming along very, very quickly, and the office tower is flying up. So I would anticipate, you know, two to six months of delays, absolute max. I wouldn't be budgeting for a year or more. In terms of actual unit specifics, one bedrooms are starting as small as 491 square feet. There are no studios. And those those 500 square foot one bedrooms are going to be starting at 650K. One plus dens are starting just shy of 600 square feet at $750,000. Two bedrooms are going to be starting just shy of 800 square feet for 990,000. And three bedrooms are starting just over 1,050 square feet. And you're looking at about 1.35 to 1.4 starting price for those. Now, the signature series is the South Tower here, or sorry, the North Tower, it's the one fronting on Wellington. It's a, it's a low rise boutique development. It's 14 stories and it's considered the higher end development of the two. Um, this one's gonna have an average per square foot of 14 to 1500. Uh, so, you know, with the larger units and less units in the building, less than 100 units in the entire thing, you're looking at a much higher starting price. Uh, two bedrooms are going to be starting at 1,050 square feet and 1.5 million. Two plus dens at 1,500 square feet and 2.1 million. And three bedrooms are starting just over 1,800 square feet at 2.5. The largest unit is the penthouse naturally, and that one is a full floor penthouse at 3,200 square feet for about 5.5 million. It's got a massive, beautiful outdoor terrace and, and everything to go along with it. Okay, now this is, if you were looking at the towers from Front Street, this is a rendering from the south here. Um, obviously, there's a ton of retail along the ground floor. You have your office tower closest to Spadina, and then the three residential towers left of that. Um, a podium connecting the office to the rental tower, and then two freestanding residential for sale towers to the left of that. Okay, so this is another rendering, um, you know, a slightly pixelated one. I apologize for that. Uh, if this is if you were looking at bird's eye view sort of at the Wellington Street side of the development. Obviously, you have the three low rise here facing fronting on Wellington. Uh, the first thing you're going to notice is that they do plan, Tridel does plan on expanding sort of the walkability and making it a more pedestrian friendly neighborhood. This will allow you know, m better connection to the King West neighborhood and, and more accessibility for nearby nearby residents to be able to access the um, the open air shopping and underground retail spaces, etc. The neighborhood connectivity is obviously great here. You're at the center of Toronto. You're at Front Spadina. You're within walking distance from multiple transit options while still being in the heart of the entertainment district. So. 
Uh, as far as location, you know, it doesn't get much better than this. In terms of what you have, you obviously have streetcars right at your doorsteps. You've got the King Streetcar just north of us. We have the Go Tracks just to the south, and we're right along the proposed Smart uh, Smart Track Go Stop. And we're also about a one kilometer, roughly 10 minute walk, depending on how quickly you walk from Union Station. Um, the one big thing you'll probably see in a lot of marketing, not just for the well, but for any nearby projects, is the proposed rail deck park. Whether or not that ever sees the light of day is, you know, another story entirely. I wouldn't purchase anything in Toronto around the rail deck park with the assumption that it's going to be done. Um, you know, it's a bonus if it gets done. The neighborhood, the neighborhood already has a lot of great. I'd love to see the rail deck park, but it's not something I'm banking on. I'd give it 50-50 odds, maybe. So assuming for once Toronto does pull through with our transit plans and we get that rail deck park, what's it going to look like? This is a rendering. This is one of the most um, most recent renderings, I believe the end of 2018, the technical audit. This is what they this is what the consultant showed um, that it could look like hypothetically, obviously very beautiful and much nicer than what we're seeing currently. Um, and then you can see the well development uh, rate, rate sort of on front there. Uh, one thing to note is that if we do get the approval on this and if we do spend that money, it's, it's highly likely we're going to see more density around the neighborhood. So it's, it's likely that you're going to see some of the parking lots and, and some of the smaller uh, sort of uh, rundown buildings or heritage buildings built on top of. To put the well in perspective, it's obviously a multi-phase community. It's a huge master plan community and it's something that we've been waiting for in a long, long time. There's a ton of demand for this one and rightfully so. It has a ton of retail space, a ton of office space, and a ton of residential space. It's sort of a perfect mix development. It's one of those developments that you know, you'll see a lot of people never leaving their home because they just don't have to. Um, so it's just under eight acres in total amount of land mass with over a million square foot of office space and combining the food market and the retail space, you're looking at over 500,000 500, square feet of space um, for retail and services and food, etc. cetera. Uh, in terms of residential, you've got over 1700 condominiums, um, some rental, the majority for sale, uh, and you know, roughly 8,000 jobs. So this is a cutout just showing sort of how it's all going to work. This would be between two of the residential towers. It's showing the lower ground retail space, um, the open air walk space, and the glass canopy covering all of the retail space here. Combining the two-story food market along with all of the retail space, both the enclosed and open air retail space, you're looking at over 500,000 square feet of retail and service space. Um, now obviously to most of us, that number means absolutely nothing. So to put it in better context, Don Mills, uh, shops at Don Mills in total is roughly 500,000 square feet as well. So to put it in perspective, it's about the same size as Don Mills. So obviously a ton of retail space, a ton of shopping space. It's not just good for the residents of this particular condo development, but the surrounding developments as well. This is the first story of the food market hall. Um, this will be on the lower level uh, and it's got a ton of different high-end vendors and grocers. Um, that'll allow you know residents to do their grocery shopping at home, um, which is obviously a huge value add for both residents um, and, and renters. So the second story of the food hall here is all of the ready-made stuff. So it's you know local uh, local vendors, ready-made food, small restaurants, etc. This is a simple rendering of you know what they expect some of the workspaces to look like in the office building in the podium of the office building. This is a rendering of the open air walkway space, the retail space that'll be in between some of the residential towers. This right here is a rendering of one of the amenity spaces. So because it's so early and we don't have a ton of marketing material, we don't have a lot of uh, renderings of the amenity space, but what's really nice is the residential towers on Front Street there all have rooftop pools. Um, so you're going to be, you know, situated on the top of the roof. You're going to have a, a lounge, barbecues, etc., and access to a rooftop pool. So it's going to be a, a really nice high-end community, and it's probably going to be a really vibrant lifestyle as well. Okay, so the golden rule of pre-construction, in my humble opinion, um, this is something I repeat to absolute death. I say it multiple times per day. It's probably the most auto-suggested phrase in my phone. Um, buy into a builder before buying into a building. And what I mean by that is always do your homework on the builder, work with a specialist in pre-construction who knows developers' histories. Uh, now it's more important than ever in Toronto specifically to be buying from a reputable developer with good financials and someone who can afford you know, to project risk out far enough and complete that project, honor originally what you purchased. 
Um, last year we saw, last year was the biggest year I believe we've ever seen for cancellations with over 4,000 units canceled. Um, now there was 19 or 20 developments in total, most of them, you know, small, low rise boutique builds by, by first time developers or brand new developers who don't have much of a track record. Um, and then obviously the two big projects that make up 90% of the headlines and, and you know, 90% of the units as well, Cosmos. Um, as well as Icona and Vaughn totaling over 3,000 of those 4,000 units. So um, with, with Icona specifically, I won't mention any names, but the developer doesn't really have much of a track record or a track record at all in our city. Um, so, you know, that one should have raised some red flags. Uh, regardless, all the marketing material looked great. They did a very good job of marketing the project, and so it sold out. Now, the problem when, when projects get canceled is obviously you get your deposit back thanks to Tarion. However, the market has continued to appreciate, and you're now likely priced out of the market. Uh, so it's super important now more than ever uh, to buy into a builder before buying into a building, making sure that permits are in place and approvals are in place, etc. So the well is being developed by Tridel, at least the residential portion is. Now Tridel is one of the most reputable developers in the city and they're not someone I hesitate with recommending to a client. They've never canceled anything that I'm, that I'm aware of ever. Um, and typically they're one of the few developers that actually come very close to their marketed dates and their marketed numbers. So Tridel is, is definitely um, a good developer. They're probably one of the best in our city. Um, in the case of the well, it's already well underway. So this is a picture of the site. And if you live in the neighborhood or around the neighborhood, uh, obviously you can't help but miss. They've got something like eight cranes on the site right now. Uh, and right there in the middle of the photo there, you can see the well's well. Uh, that's an extension of the OnWave system. So that's the well that's going to be doing a lot of the, um, the no energy heating and cooling for the residential towers, I believe, as well as the office towers, uh, which is a cool little fact. So the buildings are incredibly environmentally friendly. Really quickly, just want to touch on who we are and what we do. So my name is Jordan. I own a company called Precondo. Uh, if you browse for pre-construction condos online, you definitely have come across us. We are one of the top websites um, and one of the top teams for sales of pre-construction condos in Toronto. We're platinum approved uh, brokers with the majority of the developers in the city and Tridel is no different. What that means is we get pre-public access to the project uh, and we get to get our clients in by extension. Now, whether you use us or another platinum approved develop broker, all I, you know, all I want to make clear is that always use a platinum approved broker and do your homework and use a broker who's transparent and clear about that. There are many people these days marketing something they are not saying they're platinum when they're not, et cetera, et cetera. So just make sure you know who you're using and you trust who you're using. Uh, in addition to that, uh, I just want to make clear that we don't represent Tridel. We don't work for Tridel. We represent the client, i.e. you. Um, and so any of the prices we're giving out now, any of the floor plans that you're seeing, they're all purely based on speculation. So obviously we've met with Tridel, we've gone over some project specifics, and we have a very good idea of where prices are going to start. However, they can change at any moment and they're not officially marketed by Tridel. So when this project is launching, June 15th. So June 15th is the day that the official floor plans will be released as well as the official prices. Anything that you see between now and then is merely speculation and estimations by realtors. And anyone who tells you, as a matter of fact, that they have official floor plans or pricing, it's just not true. Tridel doesn't favor particular brokers over others. Tridel is actually one of the most fair companies we've ever worked with. Uh, and they go out of their way to make sure everyone gets everything at the same time. So June 15th is when you can expect that information. We are taking early suite reservations. So uh, if you go to precondo.ca slash well, uh, it's going to sort of allow you to put yourself ahead of everyone in line. So what that means is if you fill that out, that's going to let us know that you're one of the more interested parties. You know, we have thousands of people interested in this particular development. So if you do that, uh, based on a first come, first serve basis, we're going to, you know, confirm the information and we're going to reach out to you prior to June 15th and make sure we get your worksheet in well ahead of the rush.